Welcome. This is the 24th of August, 2022. This is Google Summer of Code, Git Cache Maintenance. Rusha Cash, what topics do we have? Uh, we have a lot of topics to discuss today. So Okay. Uh, Mark, can you like share your screen and you know open the oh, Git plugin? Can you run the Git plugin? Sure can. You bet. So you want it. You want the current build running? Yeah, the latest one. Okay, hang on just a minute then. I'm going to share my screen and let's let's start that. So share screen, here we go, share. Okay, good. So first let's go to um, get the latest build. And I assume no changes in the Git client plugin but I'd better double check that I've got no further changes. You've, that the changes you had made were already enough. Let's see, and the pull request. Do you remember the pull request number? Oh, I'm not sure. That's okay. I, I, can, I can certainly find it. I was just, uh, let's guess 1310 and we'll go to GitHub and find it. Nope, that uh, isn't I it. added a few tests also. So Very good. It's 138862. Um, okay, so let's go get this build. All right, so what we want is we want this link address. And we're going to go here, Jenkins, manage Jenkins, manage plugins, advanced. And we are going to, in that URL, paste it, deploy. And now just for safety, I think we should go, we should grab the Git client plugin, most recent pull request version, just in case I'm outdated there. And so following the same pattern, let's go find your build, which is right here, 862. Okay, and this one. Advanced URL deploy. And a restart. Now this Jenkins controller is at the moment relatively busy, so it may take a little bit for the uh, restart coming soon. We released a, pat a security patch or security fix for the Git plugin today. And so my controller has been busy adapting and making sure that the security fix is applied, that it's on all the right branches, etc. Uh, what was the security fix concerned about, uh, Mark? Uh, passwords with uh, using the with credentials uh, workflow pipeline step were not being masked. Relatively low risk, but it was a security fix nonetheless. not being lost. Yeah, so they were being displayed as literal text in the build log. And the build logs, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, coming soon, really truly, believe me. So I've added tests in the, you know, Git client plugin. So the Vitital, uh, I've tested all the uh, maintenance tasks created in 2.30, okay? 
for maintenance tasks less than 2.30 i was uh, you know not able to write tests because the way they work is completely different from how it works in versions greater than 2.30 because uh, if you look into gc for versions less than 2.30 uh, we are using the uh, git gc auto command okay which you know uh, works based on you know if i need to uh, like it works based on the status okay of uh, whether it needs to execute or not so it is internally uh, it's an internal logic of whether it needs to run or not even though i run a git gc auto command it's not a compulsion that it's going to you know run a full gc so testing that was kind of like i couldn't do it so i have to look into that but other tests have been written for versions greater than 2.30. We should see those tests, those automated tests here in the commits or in the in the uh, files changed if we look. Come on, come on. Slowly, slowly. Well, either GitHub's not very fast or my computer's not very fast. I see this little blue line yeah. advancing, but not, nothing that hints that it's actually doing the work. All right, while we were waiting, Jenkins is back. Let's check that we've got the right plugin versions. Okay, it's 3.12.0 and 4.12.0. Okay, those aren't obviously out of out of range. What would you like to show us, Rishikesh? Oh, I would like to show the you know the table which I have created. So okay, so let's see. For this, we go to Git Maintenance. No, and so if we say this one every minute, commit graph is pretty lightweight. So yeah, don't run the prefetch because prefetch has an issue as we have seen. Ah, um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to run any of the others? Yeah, you can run the GC or incremental VPAC every two minutes. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah, save the configuration. Oh, no. Did I make a mistake? No, it's fine. It's better. It's better. Okay. Okay. Data saved and now execute. So we'll have to wait for a minute and then you can see the results and the state. Okay. Behind the scenes, this isn't very optimized because I don't know how exactly to read files. It's, so basically what's happening is whenever I try to add a record into a file, into the file, what I am doing is I'm loading the entire file, adding this record to that link list, and then writing that link list back into that file. So I'm, right. I'm not sure if this is the way of doing it or do I have to read every line and then just append it to the end because that kind of implementation, I wasn't finding it anywhere. So, And I'm not aware of a way to append to Jenkins serialized XML files. I think you have to completely overwrite. So the technique you're using, as far as I know, because an XML file commonly has a beginning tag and an ending tag and if you were to append you've now somehow added something after the end tag so i i don't expect okay so no data available oh uh, did we have to i didn't refresh this page because i was not able to you know get the data time And it, it, I guess it's possible that it's not run yet. Shall we look at the logs just to be sure? Yeah, 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 sure. Okay, so let's go look at logs. 
system log. Okay, and the logs will probably be cluttered with all sorts of interesting things because, okay. So I'm not seeing anything in that log. Is there another place where I should go to, oh. should I create a log recorder? Yes, yes. Okay, new log recorder. Let's call it uh, maintenance or maybe git maintenance. And we want. Oh, we go for the task executor, I guess. This one. Yeah, uh, we can add another one. Um, okay. A, a task scheduler. Okay. And all log levels? Oh, oh yeah. Anything else you want to add? Um, I think that's fine. Hmm. Okay, why didn't it finish the task? Oh, can we go and look into the table? Like comparing? We sure can. So dashboard, manage Jenkins, git maintenance. No entries yet. Uh, do you have any caches on this? Uh... I should have many of them. Let's let's double check. But if I look, yeah, it has quite a number. So maybe ten or fifteen. Let's check that um, they have some, whoops. <laughs> so there are at least some things here that have, have content like, This here, let's just sort by. Okay, so there are definitely repositories that are non-empty. And so it looks like some of them have commit graphs. So uh, what was the log thing right now? Is the logs Okay, so tell ask your question again. The logs, like it doesn't display, and like the logs also are not running well. Right? Okay, here we go. Uh, yeah, so. So found Git, a, a modern Git version, running a commit graph, unlock the cache. So it looks like it's doing its task. Um, but then this isn't running right. Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, can can we uh, run the auditor maintenance thing from the terminal by running that mvm command? Sure. Because you want to run this command? Uh, no, no, not that. The mvm hpi, uh, you know, run to run, start the thing. Okay. So you want to run a maven hpi run? Yeah. Yeah. So you want to run a fresh Jenkins from a Maven HPI run? Yeah, because uh, the maintenance tasks are running here on the screen. It's showing it's running, but then uh, I'm not sure why is it not writing to a file. Okay, so this because this thing is sitting inside of a Docker container, mm -hmm. it's more challenging for me get to get into mm -hmm. it. Would you mind if I do that from another system? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, because I feel uh, the file path is, ha is, you know, the location of where the file is, you know, is having an impact here. Ah, so Rishikesh, okay. can't we can't we check the file where you're actually storing the ah. data? Yeah, that that is also on uh, you know, option. Yeah, can we? Ah, okay. That? Well, let's let's try reading that. I think the file's name is uh, maintenance, maintenance task records. configuration. Oh no, which uh, one? Maintenance records dot XML file. Is it at the parent directory? Oh, there yeah, it is. It is at the, yeah, yeah, it is. At no, the, no. Okay, so, so you're saying that there should be an XML file here, and yet I see q.xml and workflow flow execution and content mappings, and I see a configuration, but I don't see any data file. Maintenance records.xml. I, is it in a subdirectory? No, it is in the pair. Uh, it is actually in the plugins directory, you know, it's not in the Jenkins directory. So, you know, wherever that plugin is, I just stored it in that folder whenever I was developing it. So, you know, the plugins, uh, like the Git plugins root directory. So that was where I stored it. Okay, well, so let's go try to find it. Um, And you said the name was something A I N T E N like that. Log, okay. And you boldly gave it a space in the file name. Oh, I will punish later. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, so here is no, that what you were looking for? No, no, no. This is not the file. Oh, the file's name is maintenance records. It's camel case. Okay. Maintenance okay. records dot XML file. And I store like if you look into the code of the you know of where I created the file, it, it's stored exactly in the git plugins directory. So it's not in the Jenkins folder. Well, but if it's this so this the directory I'm looking at right now is the Jenkins home directory. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what I, I didn't store it in that directory because I wanted to ask which path, where do I store it? So I just stored it in the Git plugins directory. So I, I'm not sure what you mean when you say the Git plugins directory. Oh, uh, like when I, when I was developing uh, the, uh, you know, this feature, right? I have a Git plugins directory, right? So in that directory only, yeah. Okay, so you you explicitly stored it to slash home slash Rushi twenty slash something something slash yeah. something. Okay, yeah. so we will we will certainly never find it here then. Okay, got yeah. it. All right, so I'm That's looking in the wrong place. But so you probably didn't put it in my Git plugin directory either then. So how would we find it? Uh, Just go modify the source code. No, I like I didn't catch you. Like if we have uh do we have don't we have to build this thing again so that you know we can read it? You know that file gets created again. We we can certainly try. So let's okay. So I think what you're saying is let's build this and run it, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I was not sure of where do I put it in the Jenkins home directory. So I just put it as a, you know, for temporary sake. So if we build the plugin, would a file be created at that point of time or at the point of time when we actually enter data? Yeah, when we enter data into it, that time the file is created. So basically I'll have a check to see if the file exists or not. And then if the file doesn't exist, I'll create that file.
Okay, so come on. All right, so the thing that we probably need to do as a temporary dependency is depend on that. Nope, that didn't do it. Uh, don't we have that uh, little incremental build? So I think it would do it, right? Yeah, now, well, so let's, when I tried to do that, so using the incremental build that's on that branch, RC3100, which is, I suspect, out of date. Yeah, we're now at 32, 3242, and it's, it's now building because it's probably not publishing that one to the, to the incrementals because it wasn't up to date with the master branch. So we'll be a while before that's ready for an incremental. So what I'm not sure how to go find an incremental. Maybe hang on and I may be able to find one. No. Okay, so there's an incremental that I was using. We could try that one. I don't know if this one actually has your changes in it, Fushikesh, given as 3.12.0. Let's try it and see. Nope. Okay, is this one finished? It is not, and it's probably 30 minutes away. Okay, so how do we get this so we can do some quick diagnostics here? So here is the branch that you're working on. And when I did a Maven clean It creates. Oh, you know, uh, if you want, I could share my screen and you know, have a look. That, 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 that may be the best. Screen. Yeah, let's let's do that because I'm obviously not being successful here. So let's. I'll stop sharing and let you share yours. Okay. Uh, um, oh, wait. I do I have share that. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Wait, do I have shared access? You do. You, you should anyway. The security panel says participants are allowed to share screen. We just saw something blink there. Roshikesh, you're still there? 
His screen froze. Yeah, I think we may have lost him. He'll be back. And in the interim, we're busily building the Git client plugin. So we'll have an incremental that we can use. Oh, I'm not able to share my screen. I think there's some issue on my side. Have you given permission to Zoom? Yes. Oh, yeah, Correct I have correction. given. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But then, you know, my app is crashing and then I'm getting disconnected. Oh. Yeah. Well, so let's see, what, what alternative could we do? We could certainly try to build I mean, I built and pushed 3.12.0 or built 3.12.0 snapshot and it goes into my repository. But so then why wouldn't it find that? Hmm. Like uh, if you run uh, MDN HPI run command, like uh, it's not running because we don't have the jar file, right? Or... No, it's it's not running because it can't it can't resolve the it can't resolve the dependency on the Git client plugin that is declared. So let me try it again just to be sure. HPI, let's do a Maven clean minus D skip tests. Install. See if we can just we can compile the plugin without using HPI run, and it says. Could not resolve three dot two. Oh no, wait, wait a six. That's okay. Using the version of the palm that's on the tip of the branch, it says could not resolve dependencies for three dot eleven dot one dash RC thirty one hundred something or other. So it can, and it tried in repo jenkinsci.org public. Why didn't it try in, well, I guess public is the right place. What is, okay, so I, th I think right now the place where I'm stuck at least is that I'm waiting for the incremental build to be published for the Git client plugin. And it is probably still 20 minutes away from being published because it's got to rebuild itself based off of the master branch. Now, how could I, how can I use a local snapshot dependency? It just seems like that should work, shouldn't it? Mm -hmm. 3.12.0. Snapshot. Because that should resolve it locally. And now it seems to be resolving it. So Hushikesh, we may be able to do a, a Maven HPI colon run. It mm -hmm. says it did it and installed it. You okay if I share my screen and we'll yeah, sure. try it again? Yeah. Okay, so here is the build that I ran. And now I'm going to just do this HPI colon run. No need to skip tests, no need to do anything except that, right? Okay, now 
I need a tunnel that goes to that computer. And here is that tunnel. So it will be localhost 8085. Okay, so opening my web browser now. Okay, here it is. Now this one has no caches. Yeah. Oh, we, we can, uh, you know, fake a cache by... Oh, right, right. Okay, good good yeah. suggestion. Okay, let's do that. You can, yeah, you can go into a cache directory in the work folder. You know. Okay, so there, make cache directory. And you know, you can fake one. I think it's caches. Um, oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, does this need to be a bare repository? Oh, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yes. So, yeah, is, yeah, is it yeah. okay if it, it's not bare? Yeah. No, no, no. Let it be as a bare repository. It should be a bare. Okay. All right. So, we now have a directory here git client, client plugin dot git. Okay. So, now we can configure the maintenance dots in the UI. Okay. Get maintenance. Oh, interesting. Did you see that? Yeah, we're yeah, missing a picture. Thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. In these versions, it's not supporting, but in the normal one, it's coming. Oh, oh, this is so old. Okay, got it. Right. So notice that it's running an ancient version 2.332.4. Save, execute, right? Yeah. Can we have the logs as well? Yes. Ah, and there's an entry. Ah, finally. So, Very good. Yeah. So this is how data is appended into, you know, into that file. So the thing, the reason why it didn't work is because I think the path for where I am writing, like to where I am writing is, is, you know, different. Like if you go into that uh, folder, right, you'll find a maintenance record file, like in the Git client, in the Git plugin directory. Oh, oh, that's a very, you are very bold. You went up one, up several <laughs> levels. Okay. All right. Great. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the place where I stored it. That's why it, I guess it wasn't common. Interesting. Very okay. Very good. But it makes it easy for you to diagnose and debug. Okay, so so we have a record there, and so if I create more uh, more directories, for instance, like this. And like this, and like this, um, we now have four directories. Yeah. And so we would expect eventually that those Many. directories will be touched. Yes. And here we see an incremental repack. And so I could give it lots more work to do by
what shall we do? Something very large like Jenkins.io? Uh, the thing is, when you clone it, right, the repository is already optimized when you clone it from GitHub. So, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah, I was being more. I was actually trying to be a little more unkind here and was going to make it. Uh, how about. I don't know. Okay. I give up on that one. I need to find something that I can clone easier. So how about the JUnit plugin? Okay, so the question is, is this, how's it doing? And it's already been through four passes on Git client plugin. It doesn't seem to have yet detected my others though, Hushikesh. Yeah, uh, it, it would take time because I think we added it into the queue, right? So because one minute, two minute, three minutes. So they were they are all having, you know, the previous so uh, so like if we wait for another minute or so, I guess we would be seeing that as well. Okay, good. Oh and now that's interesting. So in this case, the the repo size, so it may have been that the the commit graph command initially run was somehow seeing an incomplete repository and this one then sees the complete, yeah, very interesting, okay. And then there are these search functionalities as well, where you can search your, uh, those things are working as expected. So if I search for, 18. Oh, very nice. 56. Or this very magical number. That's great. I look for commit. True. Apparently everything matches true, true because every line has a status of true. Very nice. So, so that search facility is a natural part of the tables, the data tables that yes. you included? Yes, yes, yes. Uli, Dr. Hoffner will be so pleased. Well done. Uh, the thing about it is now what, what exactly is happening right now is I'm uh, going and loading the entire data. Like I'm uh, reading that XML file, creating a list and then displaying it. There's no way of, you know, uh, lazy loading it, like, you know, not getting like only five uh, chunks of five data or 10 data. That, assume there are like 200, 300 records, all 200, 300 records are, you know, loaded into this table. So. Well, but, but I oh. think, I think that's very practical because, because you read them, you're also discarding outdated records every time you rewrite it, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, so you're not allowing it to ever really grow large. No, no, I think that you. Oh. Uh, the, and the reason why the other caches aren't coming, I figured it out because uh, you remember we have a static hash set, you know, a uh, hash set in the abstract get SCM plugin that, you know, uh, reads all the caches when we start the Jenkins controller. Okay. And, and we only add the caches from the UI. So if we restart this, uh, you know, uh, Jenkins instance, then only we will be able to see those caches. Okay. So restarting. So Rushikesh, there is no uh, way for the, uh, there's no way for Jenkins to pull um, uh, the updates in a file, right? This has to be an operation where the plugin updates the file and that that when we refresh, we'll be able to see the results of those repositories. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. There is no way of pulling right now. I, I don't know how do I do that. 
polling mechanism. I tried looking into it. There was this Ajax request, but I couldn't uh, get the data from the, the Java file. That's okay. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so now I think we will be seeing other plugins as well. Well, and, and it's still, it may be, it may, I don't think there's any change here. So I assume we may have to wait one minute before one, the commit yeah. graph will run again. Yeah. Now, let me check as well. Did, did I make some other mistake? Hey, those all look like bare repositories. Ah, there we go. Here's Elastic Axis. So yeah, we got the bit plugin. We got, yeah, so. Yes, and the Git plugin. Very good. Let's give it, well, but and none of these, because we're not doing, oh, we now, now oddly here, there's no entry for garbage collection on any of these, even oh, though this okay. was trying to spread it every third minute. Mm -hmm. So there's a second page as well, Mark. I, oh, oh, I need it. to look. I need to look at more pages. Very good. Oh, but still, there is no GC, right? Oh, oh, right. Is it well? Okay, so is it that it's? Hmm. Is it that it hasn't completed the incremental repack and the commit graph? No. Hmm. One moment. Now it's at 17. Uh, I, think, I think the reason behind this could be, uh, can you scroll up, Omar? Because sure. every first minute we are adding a commit graph and every third minute we are adding a GC. So I think there's a clash and only the commit graph is being added into the queue because of our cron syntax. Because if you think about it, the GC also is added into the queue, but uh, you know only the commit graph is getting the chance of executing it. You know, only so if I is. do it, so you're thinking that if I do it every seven for commit graph, that would give GC an opportunity to execute. Yeah. Or let's let's do it. Let's see. One, two, three. So if I if I want a distinct bit every time, then what I need is two, four, eight. No, no. But you said you think that it's that they're colliding with each other's definition. Yeah, because uh, what exactly is happening here is commit graph is also being added every minute into the uh, what do you tell, queue, right? And GC also is added. So first the commit graph only is being entered, even though the GC is present. So I think it is not getting an execution. It's, you know, under the so starvation state. So. Okay, so no, let's, go ahead. No, I was just saying that Rishikesh, um, let's say I have four repositories and commit graph, uh, the, while the third commit graph is running, uh, operation is running, my first GC for the first repository has come into the queue. Now, once these commit gra graphs are over, should not the GC start to run and then the but other then, commit graphs get into the queue? Uh, but uh, it depends on the way, you know, the, you know, data is added into the queue. So uh, basically what I am doing is I'm just iterating through all the, uh, you know, caches, uh, like iterating through all the maintenance tasks and then adding them. So if you think about it, first the commit graph is added at the first minute, then an incremental repack is added. Then again, a commit graph is added. Okay. And then again, uh, what do you tell? A GC also is added. Uh, so, you know, if you think about it uh, every, you, if I'm adding it every alternate minute, I feel the commit graph is only, you know, staying into the queue. Hmm. And yet we're, we're definitely seeing inter incremental repacks. And right now we've got 27 entries. So it's, it's not a, not a trivial amount, but there are only well, how about, how about a different approach? Let's attempt to garbage collect every minute. Oh, let's 
Now, Hrushikesh, I thought you had said that there was some some issue with GC, or was it no? There's an issue with prefetch. Uh, yeah, there was an issue with prefetch. Okay, so so this should have redefined it so that it will garbage collect every minute, and we could even go so far as to say, hey, let's not incremental repack and let's not do commit graph. Yeah, so we can see some GCs into yeah. Hmm. I can see Sorry, say that again, Rushikesh. I missed. We can see GCs, man. Oh, you can. Oh, 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 well, that's, oh, there we go. Okay, very good. So, okay, so there's still an open question for me on how do we, how do we assure that all the tasks get run? So if I do, if I now put commit graph every two, and incremental repack every three. And now I if I... Now, now there will be a collision between incremental repack and GC. And now I don't have a way, the table doesn't give me a way to sort by execution sequence, right? So I can't see which things executed most recently, can I? Oh, oh no, right. I can see how the duration, so Git plugin spent 600, is that milliseconds? 600 millisecond. seconds? Okay. Millisecond. I'll have to put that in. So it spent 600 milliseconds running GC, whereas the node label parameter only spent 98. But so, I, what, oh, go ahead. No, no, Mark, I'm sorry. Please continue. Hmm. No, you were saying something. You can, I, I, I can say after. Yeah, and and I, I apologize. Now I don't remember. So it's <laughs> it's clearly getting late for me, and I'm not I'm not thinking as clearly as I should. Rishab, you go ahead. I I wanted to ask what this previous execution column is signifying. I mean, I see a constant. Like when was it last executed? That date, you know, that date and time would be displayed. This is currently, I think, a random number I put. So actually, there will oh, be a timestamp okay. there. Okay. Uh, of okay. when was it last executed? Okay, got it. And that makes sense. Okay, so we're now at thirty-seven entries. And we have, we definitely have GC. So if I. I think if I, we refresh the page, right, you get the first five uh, things as the latest ones, like the latest. Ah, okay, good. Yeah, because so here it's a I refresh. Refresh. Yeah, yeah. And without any sorting, these would be the latest ones. Okay, so it performed a commit graph and. Huh. Okay, that's a little surprising that it would show multiple GCs one right after another on the same uh, on the same repository. Huh. Okay, how Has, about let's look for GC. And there are already 20 entries with GC. Good. Uh, here, I was thinking is if you look at this example only, the rate at which the file is going is very, very fast. So is there any way of uh, me cleaning this file? Because I didn't add any mechanism of cleaning, you know, uh, you know, having a fixed size because uh, data would only be added into the file, but there's no way of, you know, restricting it. But... Uh, Tell me what would what would because you're rewriting the file every time you every time you add new data, and you're disposing the you're you've got some disposal process for the data, don't you? So you're 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 saying I'm only keeping this, or are you keeping data infinitely? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for now, it's like infinitely because I didn't add any way of you know removing the old data. So that mechanism has to be added, but I was not sure. So I'm not sure about how do I proceed with that. Well, but isn't isn't the removal of the data just a matter of deleting it from the linked list and then when it's saved to disk, 
it will be it will be gone yeah but then how many records do i store that is my question like assume if there are many many jenkins or caches okay and then if we have a fixed amount of size of like you know 100 i think we wouldn't even display data of other caches present because you know all of them would cross 100 for example so what would be a fixed amount or what would be the fixed size yeah good good question so should a should the do we ask the user to give us a value do we just choose the value ourselves is there a way for us to um to not show each i mean to club these uh, to only publish the record for a repository when um whatever tasks were designated uh for them once the first batch of that has been executed then we publish that instead of publishing each entry of the repository with each task sorry ask your question again rishab so my question is that let's say i have a repository uh, the git plugin repository and i have uh, i have commit graph and i have gc so once the first commit graph and first gc and that is the batch of tasks that i'm going to run uh, you know that is that is a first uh, uh, i mean series of sequence of tasks that are going to be run for this repository so once that is done uh, is it possible for us to then show the result instead of showing each records because with this approach we will have i mean we can't we don't have the control there um of what rushikesh is trying to say right if you're going to delete if you're going to delete entries after a fixed amount of uh, rows have been created you cannot make sure that each repository which was present within the cache is going to be displayed on the table because it is very well possible that since uh, commit graph was running every minute and there are uh, let's say 20 repositories it would only i mean the table would be filled uh, you know within let's say 10 minutes with uh, 100 entries and then you have to make a delete because that is how your optimization strategy or whatever the disposal strategy has been set so so go ahead my my question is how does user make sense of this data in the sense that if we if we are able to batch i mean if you if i am able to see for a repository um what is the task that has been run and it can be multiple tasks and along that the count or the number of times that task has been run that would i mean still i mean it would only it would consume less uh, i mean space within the table is what i'm trying to say within a row if i'm able to show more data i don't know if that's possible or not but i i i guess that would make it more uh, um uh, you know easy for us and easy for the user because right now when we have collected let's say 67 entries how do i um, how do i make sense of this data right um, well so so could I, could i try a different analogy for me i mm-hmm. think i think we want some sort of it would be nice if we had some form of a sequence number to tell us which thing was executed first and and which was executed later mm-hmm. uh, whether that's his previous execution or something else that might i think help people comprehend what the sequence was but in terms of the shall we limit to a fixed number of records what if we what if we used a different limiting algorithm and said we will limit to not more than n records per the combination of repository name and task so think of the repository name and task as a job in jenkins it's not but think of it that way and we say i'm going to keep 5 i'll keep 7 no matter how many there are so if there are 10000 cache repositories we'll keep 50000 records because we need to keep some record for every one of their of their repositories and every task that they ran if we if we use that technique now rushikes that means you've got to do something more sophisticated as you delete things from the linked list but but 
I think iterating a linked list and discarding things from it is not that that painful. So what you're saying is each repository, we would hold like five records, for example, of them, you know, and, and that of each type. So assume elastic access a uh, plugin, five commit graphs of theirs, you know, and then five GC of that is what you're saying, right? That's what I was thinking. What do you, does that sound reasonable to you? Does that sound like that might work for the user? Yeah, that's, that sounds reasonable. We could kind of store it in a hash map as well. You know? oh, oh, right. I there are, I... Certainly there are other data structures that make that style of storage much easier, aren't there? Yeah. So that, that sounds very reasonable to me to say, okay, we're going to keep, because we think you care as a user about the task that's being performed and the repository where it's being performed, we should probably, now, now is, there, is there a way with these this very elegant data table to do some form of parent to child collapse where all commit graphs for a single for a single repository are grouped together automatically as parent to you know I, I, and I don't know you you can look at the data data tables and see what what Uli has has made available I'm not sure if it's got a grouping concept or not it has some concept of a collapse uh, I've seen that Oh, oh, it yeah. does. So, okay. Yeah, it does. It does. So, uh, like, can you explain, like, what uh, was that uh, feature about the collapse thing, like grouping? Thing? All I was thinking was, okay, today I see, at the moment, I see many rows with Elastic Access Plugin GC. Mm -hmm. And for visualization purposes, it might help me if those were an expandable thing where this shows up as one and older copies of older results of the same thing are hidden under it as a collapse and expand. Now, uh, now that's, that yeah. is so completely not, not required, right? It's, it's just, okay, as a user, it might be easier for me to understand what's happening if I collapse and expand to see what the history looks like. That actually makes sense. That would even, you know, be easier to read. I, uh, I would, I would try seeing, you know, implementing that, you know, see how it would fit in. Yeah. Now, now, perfectly understood. If if the ultimate is, hey, that doesn't work. It, yeah. It's or or gee, that just doesn't make sense. That's a bad user experience. Don't do that. Then I I I completely understand that as well. This is, this is actually really quite impressive. I mean, look at this. Mm -hmm. I can sit here and search and there it is. And now the, the, the 25 applies to my search. Oh, Uli has done, Uli and his students have done amazing things here. This is great. So as a deliverable, we've achieved uh, what we want to show to the user. And I think what we've recently discussed is an optimization that we could perform if that is possible. Rishikesh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, there are few things, like if you go into that terminal, right, I think you would find, uh, like if you open the terminal from which you've started this, you'll find Git, you would find uh, Git versions. No, can you open that terminal? Yeah. Yeah, you will find these. Okay, this is something I'm not sure. This thing keeps happening because this thing actually, when I want to get the Git version of the underlying uh, computer, right, to check whether it is, uh, should I run legacy maintenance or the normal maintenance, I need to call the underlying Git version. So this thing keeps happening. Is there any way of stopping it? Because I couldn't. Uh, I, I think there must be, but we'll have to look at it and see. I, it's not immediately obvious to me. Wouldn't we, can't, can't we somehow remember that we found this version before? Is there a way to remember that? I, okay, there we go. It, it, that's, that's kind of elegant. We see, okay, there's, there's my cue. Now we watch to see when it moves. 
the thing why i didn't uh, you know create a feel to remember it is because in jenkins we have a way of changing the you know get executable right the mm -hmm. underlying so assume on the next cache when i want to run uh, the next cache which is running like the get uh, maintenance uh, task so then i would be using the uh, version set in the you know ui global configuration so that was one of the reasons why i didn't change you know didn't store the git version and 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 that 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 makes sense at least at some level because i could on my controller i don't know why i would but i could on my controller have multiple command line git versions installed right where i'm yeah. and i've got several different command line git tools for some specific need okay one two three four five six so it just i think it just completed more and here we go 112 records this yeah so that was one thing i wanted to discuss there were there are a few other things okay one okay. thing is about documentation like do i document the code which i've written or when do i do that or that the, the, the answer is yes okay so like, the documentation yeah. should go into this location here. There's this readme. And given, given the nature of this, that it's got a, what I'd call an, a very nice UI component, you should probably take a screenshot and embed the screenshot just as this, this picture has a screenshot you should probably put a section in there that describes it and has a screenshot look this is how it how it looks now and go ahead uh, regarding you know uh, documenting the code do i do that as well or uh, you know the methods and the parameters of method takes so java java doc for java doc is highly recommended for public public methods so yes, otherwise somebody else has to do it. And if it's me, I'll just make wild guesses as what your intent was. And I'll write those wild guesses and people will then complain, Mark, you made a wild guess and you were wrong. That was something I wanted to ask. Uh, any uh, suggestions on improving the UI? Like the UI is, uh, Sorry, any the suggestions system. on the UI? Yeah, the UI, current UI, your thing. I don't have any. I, f I find the cron syntax a little bit challenging, but it's very much the way Jenkins does things. So you're absolutely consistent with the rest of Jenkins. Cron syntax is how it's done. I just, uh, I'd love to have a, a calendar picker, you know, all sorts of exotic things like that. But the problem is, none of them are functionally rich enough to replace cron syntax because cron i can say at daily i can say at hourly you know i can say yeah and then there are all sorts of now i guess there is one that it would be nice if we could do a Could we get an online help available that would coach them on the cron syntax? Because we don't have help icons here. And, and that may, or a help, help icon even for the commit graph. What is a commit graph and how does it help them? What is prefetch and how does it help? Because we can certainly describe that in the online documentation in the readme here. What are these tasks? but the user is accustomed to reading the help from a question mark right next to it. Oh, uh, because I tried adding the help files, but you know, I was facing some kind of problem while adding the help files. So mm. I couldn't add the, you know, help files here. Yeah, and we may have to, and we may have to request assistance from someone else because my, my success rate with adding help is far less than 100%. I have to work very hard to find the right place to put it in the in the UI elements. 
also there's this uh, commands i was thinking of you know suggesting users to use commands such as hourly daily rapid you know and yes. zone syntaxes because yes. uh, the underlying architecture of hourly is assume if i put commit graph hourly and gc also hourly both of them don't run at the same time you know there's a random in you know there's a random uh, you know time selected at each hour and both of them are scheduled in such a way that you know jenkins is not overloaded so i was thinking of you know adding that as well into the readme so that you know it, it will be beneficial and and i think that that is a very wise that's a very wise thing for you to recommend especially because it it avoids the risk of them making a typographical mistake, which causes them to run much more frequently than they wanted. Yeah. There's, there's, it's not free to run these operations, right? The, the execution time is a reminder to us, even on a perfectly packed repository and one that's as small as the Git plugin is, it's something under a hundred meg, um, that still takes 600 milliseconds. I'm I'm sure if we did actually we ought to just just to be absolutely obnoxious. Um, minus minus bear minus minus reference. Just a minute, bugs. Okay. All right, so cloning now. Okay, now just to show you how embarrassing this is, it's 105 megabytes. So when that one runs, and now that you said that the way we want, we get that to be seen is we restart. Yeah. Okay. Also regarding the prefetch, would uh, is there like do we like just comment it or like what about that? Because we have private repositories as well, right? So uh, how do we proceed with that? Ah, right. So prefetch, prefetch. Well, how is the cache being popular? Oh, there really isn't. You don't know the credentials for that that repository right you you simply cannot because they must not be written to the disk if they're written to the disk that's actually a very bad choice so so well so maybe what the answer then is is we just skip prefetch if it fails due to credentials because we cannot we can't do a prefit prefetch without authentication and in order to have authentication, we would have to somewhere record the credentials that were used to access that cache. Because is there any way of knowing it before and uh, that it's a private repository? Because if once I call the command line get right, and then once I call the command line get, and then I start scheduling and running the prefetch command, then I have no control over the process. Okay. So, so um, a technique you can use is you could do a git, you could make a call to LS remote okay. and LS remote will fail if it's a, if it's a privileged report, if it's a private repository. So you're saying of git LS remote? Or? Yes. So there is a, there is in the git client plugin, there is a method that invokes LS remote. Okay. And if you call that method, it will fail for you okay. if, if the repository is, is private and okay. you have not provided credentials. Okay, that, that kind of makes sense. Then uh, using that method, I think I can, you know, skip the maintenance, uh, you know, for private repositories and 
run the prefetch command. Yes. So, yeah, I think that was it. About All right. Tech. I yeah, am going to we, get some sleep. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, can we refresh the page and, you know, see whether we got the cache or not? Yes, let's do it. Okay, git maintenance. And let's look for Jenkins-bugs. There it is. It is around 10 seconds, right? And the execution time for that GC is longer than any other GC, right? Let's... Yeah, it's around 10 seconds, I guess. Okay, so if we sort by execution time, very good. All right, and that and that is definitely, let's look at that. That is a no-op. Uh, because if we look in Jenkins bugs git objects, there's nothing in objects except pack. And in pack, there is exactly one file, a pack and one bitmap. Now there isn't a commit graph yet, is there? Get the commit graph. It'll be in the objects. Yeah, so so it's run GC twice. Now that's a little surprising that it's run GC twice but has not run commit graph. That may be back to my can collision. Can we the page? Can we sure. The page? Okay. okay, so. Jenkins dash bugs. Whoops. So let's make it two three five save. Okay, now we refresh and now and Jenkins dash bugs. It would it would take time if I'm interested. So I think with this we have achieved what we you know the deliverables what we wanted. There are few other things which you know can get better. So I think I would be working on those. The test for the git client plugin also has been written only for the legacy. I think the legacy commands those are not working. Uh, I didn't write uh, the test for those. So, okay. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll look into that as well, and yeah. Very good, excellent work, Rishikesh. Really good. So we will plan to meet again next next week. Now next I have week. to warn: yeah. next week I am arriving home. Next week on about. 12 hours or about 24 hours prior to our scheduled meeting, I leave Alaska on an airplane to return home after having visited my grandchild. My new grandbaby was just born in Alaska. Congratulations. <laughs> and so I may not be when I when we meet a week from today, I may not be I may be even less functional mentally than I was today. I apologize for that in advance, but I may be very sleepy. We, we can schedule the meet for next day as well, on a Thursday as well, you know, okay. and, or and on a Friday. So, so for me, I'd prefer Tuesday, and then let's see if we need, an, uh, sorry, for you, what is Wednesday? I, I must talk in your time zone. So the Wednesday morning meeting actually works quite well. Just if we find Wednesday when, you, when we're meeting that I'm not, not useful, then I may say, okay, let's try for another day. Yeah, it, it, because if we have the meet, you know, we can, uh, you know, discuss and get things done. So it's fine if it's on a Monday or a Tuesday or a Thursday or a Friday. So, yeah, that's up to you. So Great. Very good. Well, Rushikesh, thank you very much. I'm going to go ahead and I assume we call an end to our session. And yes. I'll, I hope to post the recording tomorrow. Thanks okay. very, very much. Thank you.